ערב טוב <coughs> לכולם, שלום, um, תודה שהצטרפתם, uh, וברוכים הבאים לפסטיבל דוק אביב ה-22 ולתחרות עומק שדה. Uh, השיחה הבאה תארך uh, באנגלית, ולכן אני אשנה מה את השפה, ברשותכם כמובן. So, uh, guys, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the, to the 22nd Doc Aviv Film Festival and to the Depth of Field uh, competition. We are um, honored, very honored, actually, to have with us uh, the, the filmmakers, uh, Louise Lemoyne and Ila Becker. Um, and, yeah, and, and to mark the, the, the world premiere of their film, Uh, Tokyo Ride here at, uh, at Tok Aviv. Um, we, we will have a conversation of, um, of approximately uh, 30 minutes about the film. Uh, you're invited to, to leave your questions, uh, if you have any, in the Q&A uh, section at any time. And I was told to tell you not at the chat, but at the Q&A um, section. I'll just say a couple of words about myself. I'm, so my name is Erez. Um, I belong to the architecture department of the Bezalel Academy of Arts and Design. Um, I'm currently uh, in my home in Tokyo. Um, uh, it is 2 a.m. now. It's a very quiet night in uh, central Shinjuku um, in Tokyo. Um, I just want to say thank you for the invitation to Doka Viv. Um, Uh, and as well, thank you, Doc Aviv, for, uh, for setting um, this event in cooperation with, uh, with Bezalel, with the architecture department. And, um, and I think we're set to, uh, set to begin, if that's okay, set to start. So um, I, I'll just, um, I'll, uh, just as a context, I'll, I'll, I'll say, I'll mention that uh, in Tokyo Ride uh, follows two recent Tokyo-based documentary by, uh, by Louise and Ila. Um, the last one was uh, The Buto House uh, in 2019. Um, and a bit earlier than that was the, the much-loved um, you know, Moriyama House of uh, 2017. Um, the first one was uh, um, kind of a, generally about Oka-san, Keisuke Oka of the Arima Stone House um, in next to Shinagawa. And, um, and Moriyama House, of course, is Yasuo Moriyama uh, and the Moriyama House. Um, so kind of we begin by, by mentioning uh, there, are, there are three films in Tokyo um, in three years. And, and it's, it, it kind of, it seems that you like it here. It seems that... Um, yeah, but actually we... Actually, I have not three. But we <laughs> made actually five. five. We, <laughs> five. Uh, we, we added, because we, we've been working for um, now maybe three years on a, on a large scale project that we entitled Homo Urbanus and uh, exploring um, daily life and, and our uh, cultural habits in regards to what uh, public space means in many cities of the world and actually As we lived, and maybe that's the point with which we can start, we, we actually lived for about six months in, in, uh, in Kyoto and uh, a bit in Tokyo. So that's why we really uh, intensely lived uh, and loved Japan. And that, that explains how many films we, we made there. And so two of the series of the Homo Urbanus are shot, one in Tokyo and one in Kyoto. Okay. And uh, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. us, Japan was a very, uh, uh, very intense period of work and, and uh, because we were so amazed uh, in their understanding of, uh, of society, of, of space and of architecture. That's why we, we really, <laughs> we were quite inspired to make films. So in, in a way, you, you, you're more familiar in a way in Kyoto than Tokyo, actually, being mm. there for a longer time. Yeah, well, definitely. That's a unique, but that's a unique position just for you to be aware of. You know that um, of let's say foreigners, non-Japanese, you know, interested in architecture, who has this you know distinct interest and knowledge of Kyoto more than in Tokyo. But um, uh, could, would you like just you know to 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 perhaps tell us a bit about uh, um, 
the, the film that we gathered here for, for Tokyo Ride. Would you like to introduce it, please? We, we <clears throat> it's just a coincidence because we talked about uh, this film with, uh, we, we met uh, Rue and Ishizawa in, uh, in, in Bordeaux 10 years ago, uh, or maybe a little bit more than 10 years ago. And we, um, yeah, it was more, more than 10 years ago because we just finished uh, the, our first film that is called Us House Life. So it was, uh, I think, 13 years ago when we met him and we, he, he liked a lot our first film. And uh, so he asked us to, to go to Japan and make a film uh, in a house that uh, he was just finishing. That was a Moriyama house. And, uh, but it was 13 years ago and we, we didn't know Japan. So we say, wow, it's really a pleasure to make a film there. But uh, once we come uh, in Japan, maybe we can talk about it. And uh, so 13 years passed, uh, 12, because uh, we made the film last year. And uh, one day how we, 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 we were in Japan to just to film uh, the two films, uh, to prepare a film and the film for Homo Urbanus in Kyoto and Tokyo. And so we, we just uh, sent an email to Ryu and we, we stay, we kept in, uh, in contact during this period. Yeah, because of uh, Moriyama-san. Yeah, so, so w w yeah, uh, with Moriyama-san, uh, we, we, we went to, to, to Tokyo just to take a tour for preparing Omurbanus. Omur and uh, as, as you have seen in the Moriyama-san film, he just, uh, we, he brought us to the Moriyama house and uh, there was a, this fantastic encounter with him and uh, with the, the music, the noise music. So we decided to make the film. After that, after that film, uh, we just uh, we, uh, we, yeah, we we were in love with uh, Japan, so we decided to to go living in Japan for a while, so for mm -hmm. six months. We decided to go to live in Kyoto for six months, and once we were there, uh, we, we we met uh, also Nishizawa and say Ryu. Told us uh, if you if you have time one day we I would love to 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 take you for a tour in uh, in, in Tokyo with my car, so we say wow it will be a pleasure uh, thirteen years after to to take a tour of the city with you, and so we prepare we prepare this uh, this kind of uh, this um, this day but we prepare this day thirteen years <laughs> later ago so. It was a very important moment for us to, to take this, uh, this tour with him, to spend a, a day, to spend a day with him, because he, he, he knew very well, he knows very well that the city, he knows everything in Tokyo, and we wanted to have a, a view of the city with, with him. And as, it, as you have seen in the film, uh, we really were not lucky because uh, it was the, the only day where it was raining, 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 so, so hard. <laughs> And this was a really, and everything is, is in the film. I don't know if people that are listening, uh, they have seen the film, but uh, it was really a surprise for us because uh, just before that day, it was the, the weather was wonderful, it was a uh, sunny weather, so fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also uh, after, after the day, it was fantastic. But uh, just at night, we, we decided to see, um, to met at night in the morning and it was raining so hard and uh, as, he has a, a very old car. He, we, he, he was obliged uh, to, 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 to keep the, the, the windows open for all, all the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. otherwise, otherwise uh, he couldn't see anything about uh, over the, uh, in the car. So it, it, it was, a, a, from the beginning, it was a sort of adventure. adventure. It was a, a little catastrophe for us, but uh, at the same time, it was very funny because uh, it's a really a, a different w view of the city with this kind of uh, rain. And the uh, car. Yeah, and the car. So we just took a, a tour uh, during one day and meeting some uh, people. So uh, Seiji Masan also, we went to the house of Seiji Masan. And uh, we met also, we, we, we went to the best restaurant, uh, Soba restaurant in Tokyo, mm -hmm. as uh, we were saying. And other 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 places, uh, a, nice. a, a temple and other architecture that he likes, and we had that. Uh, I don't I don't say where we, uh, the film ends because uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a surprise. Yeah, so, so anyway, 
um, the so I'll, I'll just I'll, maybe I'll continue with Nishizawa. Um, he's he's his character. He's quite a charmer. Uh, the enemy. So he's in the film. He's so I mean, he's so welcoming. Um, he's so I would say energetic. He's pretty as well. Uh, mm -hmm. He's wet around. He's he's, um, he's not afraid of it at all. Uh, he's very confident um, in uh, in how he's playing um, there. And uh, uh, I was very impressed with his, or noticing at least, I was um, very much noticing his interest to explain all the time what is Japanese architecture um, to you. Um, um, I was kind of very much noticing his... Uh, you know, cultural um, generalization that he did, you know, the we and you, or we and they, the Chinese, the European. The, um, and and also I was very impressed with his downplaying of Japanese culture um, in, in relation to, again, to, to the other all the time. I mean, what do you make of it? I think... Um... He has an interesting uh, position in terms of being a Japanese architect uh, with a career that is mainly uh, abroad. And so he has this kind of uh, strange position of the um, in-between. So he has, he's purely Japanese, but uh, with a great knowledge of uh, the Occidental culture at large, the mm. Western culture, let's say. And so I think personally, constantly makes the links and the, uh, and 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 uh, and is concerned and, and uh, aware of the contrast and and uh, and the gaps of communication and culture, and and we actually were in our um, in our experience of living in Japan for a little while, we w we were personally in this incredible. Uh, an intense experience of, of discovering uh, these uh, cultural gaps and what it means in terms of communication, how you uh, approach someone, how the language works, how the, uh, all these um, diplomatic uh, procedures to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to understand a culture which is so far away from ours. And so we were very much ourselves uh, into those questions about uh, yeah, the, those cultural gaps and, and what uh, and how to understand those differences and, and, and the influences, etc. So I think he was quite interested to, to discuss this as he's also a good witness and, and a good observer of that. So that's why the film is very much driven to that, to that direction. But you think, um, I see, but there's, you know, there's... Um... There are some other people, you know, in the in the status of Nishizawa here in Japan, uh, that sort of develop famous artists, filmmakers, architects, and that, that sort of develop uh, two different persona: a persona that they present to the inside, and a different persona that they present to the outside, you know, to, to the rest of the world. Uh, uh, Kitano Takeshi is very much such a person. Beat Kitano Takeshi. Uh, Atei Suzaki, you know, we can kind of look at his uh, past with very much like that. Do you think that Zoni Shizawa is working in such a way that he's very much aware of his position and that he's developing a particular persona for? I think, uh, at least for the film, he, he has, because of the car, because of his attitude, or because the way maybe also he dresses, or etc. I think he, he likes to play with, with a certain... Uh, uh, yeah, you, you know, the, the, uh, because of his love for European cars, for instance, he, he develops it in, in, the, in the film. Yeah. I think he, he developed a little bit of that uh, attitude, no, of the Latin attitude or uh, people to, uh, with which we discussed the film earlier before um, the final cut uh, uh, looked at him very much as a, as a also a rock and roll lover and uh, all this western type attitude is i don't know how much he built it intentionally but he, yeah. he, he absorbed a lot of it i think that, that's also the the why we, we decided to to make a black and white film because okay. we 
we didn't we didn't shoot on black and white. We we shot the film in colors. So mm -hmm. we decided sure. later that to put in. I, I'm saying this because someone asked to why in black and white the film. Yeah. And uh, we decided to put it in black and white because when we tried just to say, we say, wow, if, if it was in black and white, how will it be? Will be? And we just say, uh, we, saw, we saw the images and we say, wow, that's it. It's, it's him. It's, it's him in the, it's a, it's a rock star from the 70s, uh, from the 60s, in, the, in a car that from the 60s. So everything was wonderful like this so it's a kind of image that maybe i yeah. don't know if there's a aware of, the, of that but uh but it's, also uh, because of spectrography of that period and yeah yeah he's 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 kind of very much a plain uh or not plain but kind of projecting uh image either um you know an image of, of a certain rebellion or or um or of plain um you know, declaration of difference, let's say, from you know, from from maybe fellow architects, even of the of the kind of local cultural context. Uh, and he's he's saying, I mean, all the time I've I've noticed that he's saying quite, I'm to say, rough things almost. I'm mean, European, I'm mature. I wrote it. I'm mature, old, armed. This is very, very beautiful word in a way. Europeans are armed, but Japanese they're young. They're babies. He actually says that they're naked. Yeah, this this arm, this yeah. arm, yeah, this arm. It's very beautiful. I've never heard someone mention. I heard so many, you know, ways to try to say okay, to explain what's going on here, but he's using these words. Yeah, beautiful. And I think, for instance, because he mentioned many times during the day, we didn't keep all the all the mentions, but he is fascinated by the European or the Western brutality. I think he, he's not from that culture, but he absorbed a lot of it. I think he, he also, as I said, he's a sort of bridge, a cultural bridge in between because he, mm. he works very, very well Western culture and, and he has identified or chosen certain features of Western culture that he, he also wanted to take from or to absorb from. And I think this brutality he's mentioning in terms of um, and, and for him, I think the meaning is uh, more subtle than the term itself. Uh, and yeah. means also in terms of communication uh, modes, uh, because he's much more open to, to discussion, to debate, to, um, than, than the average uh, Japanese, I think. We, we had... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> quite a lot of difficulties to uh, enter in deep contact and in, in conversation and uh, in, okay. in a Western way, I think, with other Japanese people. You know, that's actually something very nice. I mean, first, I just want to mention just one other thing that he said. He, he, he mentioned, he said that Japanese are unaware of the concept of happiness, of the notion of happiness. It's quite a thing to say, but I think he's so accurate in this. And I, I looked at it and then I checked actually in the world ranking of happiness. Actually, I went there and, and I saw, and that's, it's quite remarkable that in the World Happiness Report, Israel is ranked 13, um, and Japan is ranked 58, France is ranked 24, um, you know, in, in a ranking from, you know, Finland won, and uh, and South Sudan, you know, somewhere somewhere below, and um, and yeah, it's I think quite that, Denmark also, also not Denmark is Was very high because we we made a film there, and everybody says I'm so happy. So we made a film that we we entitled the film the uh, the Infinite Happiness because they if you talk with the the the, 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 the they would say I'm so Danish, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. And and it's so it's so correct of him kind of to associate that. Uh, you know that that lack, you know, the lack of the notion of happiness here within Japan. But there's um, um, another thing, just because you mentioned about about language, you can be said you've, you've you've referred to the difficulty of conversation. I just I would like to refer again to the three films. So uh, about these, you know, words and buildings in a way. So in a way, Moriyama-san spoke little, you know, and, and it went very well, you know, because of you know shared interest in music. Um, it left space, kind of a productive space for other things to, to do. In, 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 with Oka-san, uh, he didn't speak at all, 
way, um, English. And so it went very well, I think, because of labor, you know, because of, you know, the body and the building there, the concrete, the dirt, and, and it was really, it went perfect in a way. Uh, but Nishizawa spoke, you know, with, without, without stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What do you make of that? Uh, in a way, I, I, abruptly, I would, I would re answer saying it was a relief for us in the sense that, uh, as I said, our experience of Japan was very much about uh, communication difficulties. And so uh, in, in this case, we had the pleasure and the pleasure of being able to openly discuss and to uh, and and to discuss with someone who had as i said i repeated it myself that who had this um wide vision of cultural differences and 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 a great experience which allows to share uh, these experiences of cultural comparisons and uh, and, and, uh, and bridges but uh yeah i think um it's also related to the English level, no? because uh, I think maybe Okasan and Moriyama-san, they have a lot of things to say, but uh, they are totally blocked by their English level. And uh, I remember when we first met uh, Nishizawa in Bordeaux, he spoke very bad English, so it was very in complicated. Ten in 10 years, in 12 years, he, has, uh, he improved incredibly his uh, English mm -hmm. level. He speaks very well English now. So I think it now is more is natural to talk, yeah, no? Uh, yeah. 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 There's the, you know, there's there's um, a very wonderful thing scene I thought was the it's taking place when she's always taking play taking you to the house of uh, of Kazuyo Sejima, and um, um, you know she let the camera in, and and that's not a simple thing. I mean, you know, the house I would say Sejima's house. Um, so what we learned from how you edited the film. Uh, it belongs to a group of secret houses here in Tokyo that, uh, you know, they're kept outside, kind of uh, unrevealed to the, you know, to, to, the, to the lenses and to the gazing views of, you know, of tourists. And sure. with your film, I mean, we were able to see it was quite, very, quite beautiful. I mean, the, the daily routine, the, to learn about it at least, you know, the, how I put... Did the, the, the contract or the agreement with the uh, with Ishizawa was to keep it totally secret, and so we didn't. We it was a film. surprise. It was a yeah. surprise. He, he said, uh, you, "You don't have to film the the road." So. The, the, yeah, we we yeah. couldn't. Now I I couldn't even locate it on the map <laughs> in Tokyo. Honestly, yeah, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, we don't know exactly where it is, but uh, we arrived. We, um, the heavy rain and we let up. A, it was a marvelous moment, and I think this is really the first time. Also, they uh, they uh, associated the house with uh, Sejima because until now, it was not said. It was just uh, in in a very anonymous way presented as uh, house A and not not as uh, the house. Yeah, I her. think so too. I think so too. There's um. <laughs> What, what we really wanted to uh, also share, and I think this is quite uh, lovely the way they do, is that they talk about, first of all, how difficult it is to work uh, together and in terms of fights and intensity in the relation, but also this, uh, this exchange, uh, this, uh, this, one, this desire to, sh to share and he uh, designed the house for him, for her, and now she is designing the house for him. And so that's that's lovely. And also the the history of uh, uh, of uh, the previous generation, because they it's all a story of architects uh, in a relation of friendship and, and making houses for each other. And that's that's a very interesting also story for. for backstage story of the Japanese architecture. He said, I love houses. He said it again and again, yeah. Yeah, in the film. Um, uh, uh, can, perhaps uh, it's nearly a final question. The, would you, uh, I just want to refer to, you know, to Japanese architecture, perhaps as a form of export, um, you know, kind of crossing um, national borders. I mean, would you ever tell me why is Japanese architecture so valued um, outside Japan? Now, I, I learned recently 
Uh, I read a, comer, a comment of uh, Fumio Nanjo. He's the director of the Mori Art Museum um, here in Tokyo. And, and he said uh, very clearly, I, I'll quote him, he said, architecture might well be the most internationally valued aspect of Japanese culture today. Meaning, I mean, it, it's meaning that it's more than anime, more than food, more than, than gardening, more than theater and so on. Would you say, why is that? Probably I see it as a container of all of this. Oh, uh, uh, I mean, this embodies a Japanese lifestyle which is, which is seen from all over the world as, a, as an idea of uh, harmony and beauty probably because uh, I think seen from and, and that's what you learn living in Japan is that they uh, they manage uh, incredible human density with uh, a certain degree of uh, of peace and, and, and uh, mental harmony, which is quite uh, unique in our urban panorama. And, and that's, uh, I think this is, this is probably this unicity in, in the lifestyle in general, embodied by architecture, which, which make everyone dream. And probably, yeah, because this is more than the architecture, this is also the way the architecture is uh, photographed, but also the what we perceive from from the domestic life, for instance. Because I think in in Japanese architecture, the, the houses were extremely uh, extremely mediatized worldwide as a sort of um, dreamland for everyone. But I think yeah, this is more than architecture. This is far far more in terms of uh, this. Uh, incredible uh, attention to details, but the details of life, the details that make everyone uh, breathe and um, uh, so it, it's, I, I see it as a role, really. And you think in a way that, that architecture facilitate that sensibilities more currently, more as a continuous and more than other things. Um, you know, very good yeah. in doing that, yeah. Uh, you're very much right, by the way, about house, houses in particular are facilitator of, uh, of Japanese culture currently uh, and the migration of this form of culture across national borders. And, and yourself, by the way, uh, is um, very much um, acting, let's say, very much allowing such migration you know, across borders, and particularly, of course, of houses. Um, um, what about... Um, what about, you know, we're very, we're usually very much used to see the city here, and particularly Tokyo from, from street level, um, usually through trains. Um, of course, we are um, so much more used to use and to see Tokyo, you know, through the lenses of the railway network. Um, and now we, you know, we joined, you know, a history of film that, you know, look at it through car, and that was quite a remarkable, um, picture of it, this trip on the highway. You know. But it's incredible, these are those yeah, highways. It's very surprising, yeah. It's uh, so brutal. He <laughs> keeps talking about uh, European brutality, but uh, the brutality of those highways in the middle of the street are incredible. That uh, crossing. Uh, yeah, building, the building. So yeah. close from buildings, and uh, it's uh, unbelievable, yeah. You know, what he did to your film, because it made, it made something very nice about scale, because, you know, something you've, you've elevated, you know, on the one side, a sort of a range of scales, because on the one side, you've um, elevated the second largest ever construct, you know, in, in Tokyo's history, the second one, which is the highway. And on the one side, of course, you know, the smallness of, of the house. You, know, you sort of you know, concentrated very much on the two ends of, of kind of um, of scales, you know, in the history of, of, of Japanese construction. Yeah, yeah. this that is was... probably what uh, amazes any foreigner coming to, to Tokyo, which is really, really this contrast of scales, which is impressive because uh, we all know that uh, in, a, a, in a neighborhood, you can be in a little house like Moriyama-san with, uh, with a little garden and uh, uh, observe uh, 
uh, butterflies in your garden and you just cross the the main road and, and access uh, to the, the, those incredible highways. So this is it's a very strange city eh, for, for that because I don't know where we can find this. It's a kind of uh, every neighborhood has a kind of a, a wall of buildings on the facade, but that when you go behind that, you have uh, villages. It's incredible mm -hmm. because you just go away 20 meters from the, the, the this kind of highway or boulevard or big street and you have you are in the village no yeah. in, uh, 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 in a in a sort of countryside it's a very in the center of the city yeah, so yeah. very strange and with, Tokyo a, for with, that. with heavy and, and brutal infrastructure that connects all this yeah so it's it's really impressive i'm um luis and Ila, I'm, I'm getting here um request to to sum up and to to, yeah. to thank you for that yeah um, so thank, thank you, thank you very much thank you very much for your time thank, thank you very you. much Alex. thank you okay. goodbye yeah. and bye good luck, and good luck with that and we're looking forward to these two other films in japan sure. thank you and, and uh, good night yeah. have a good night bye <laughs> <laughs> right, guys bye bye. bye bye thank you everyone for being here thank you.